Hi everyone, Sherlock White here. Welcome to the overlay bar, and this time around we've got but a simple new tab here, also known as Cal of the Simple New Tab channel. Yeah, hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So, Cal, can you do a short summary of what you do? Yeah, so uh, I'm the editor in chief at uh, Free Speech Geek. Uh, we kind of just do this overall general. Uh, geek uh, exploration of uh, culture and society. Uh, we go to a lot of cons and talk to people, and as well as produce a lot of content. Uh, one of those being simply new type, where we talk a lot about Gundam and uh, a lot of Gundam stuff. Um, but not just Gundam. We also do stuff like X Men stuff. We get, we just interviewed the producers of X Men, so that's going to be something new and exciting coming out soon. But uh, other than that, it's a lot of Gundam. I'm all about Gundam. That's pretty much our bread and butter over at Free Speech Geek is, is the Gundam talk and simply new type for the most part. Good stuff, good stuff. If I recall with your coverage of mainline you see you're currently in the Zeta and Double Zeta territory, right? Correct. We are exploring Neo Zeon right now, yes. So we just finished up the Grips conflict on our on our channel and we're we're kind of uh, maybe Almost halfway. Almost halfway through uh, Neo Zeon right now. Uh, Haman is just now entering the Earth sphere and making her kind of uh, claim on Earth territory. So that's where I am at in uh, in our coverage of UC. Oh, so the episode where where Judo meets the Capil pilot that does the bowling strike on the <laughs> oh, yes, on the yes. Zaku Mariners. Yes. That, that's uh, oh, yeah. yet to come. I see. <laughs> yes, yes, that was good stuff. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm exploring uh, a lot of UC stuff right now, but trying to get into a lot of uh, side uh, stuff as well, which is kind of new to me. The mangas and the side stories, especially I like to explore the One Year War a lot because there's so much, there's so much in that one year. Oh that yeah. You could explore. So uh, I like all of the side stories that are coming out of it. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm still exploring more. There's a lot I don't even know still that I, I, I need to learn in terms of uh, the U overall uh, Universal Century uh, timeline and whatnot, but um, it's fun. It's been fun so far. It's a fun ride. Yeah, like there's a, a whole lot of One Year War side stories. They got a jam packed. You know, it's all, it's almost like a can waiting to <laughs> burst. Like yeah. there's the MS Legacy uh, yes. being, uh, you know, basically chock full of uh, both uh, side story fan service. With uh, mm -hmm. Lido Wolf and Midnight Fenrir, on top of uh, yeah. if I recall correctly, they also have a sort of a crossover story between uh, the various UC side stories taking place shortly after One Year War. It yeah, does? yeah, there's definitely a bunch of that. I know, like Judo shows up later when he's like an older man. Oh yeah, uh, and uh, Crossbone Skullheart. And uh, yes. well, yeah, and Skullheart yeah, so... and. Uh, of nothing in Victory Gaiden and yeah, mm -hmm. in Victory Gaiden and uh, recently uh, the guy who did Crossbone, Yuichi Hasegawa, in uh, yes. I think in the most recent run of uh, Crossbone Love and Peace, he also uh, included a bit of a prequel arc with both Professor mm. Karras and uh, and Judo Ashita, of course, Ooh. under yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I think I've read, I've read a summary of it. I haven't dived into it yet. Yeah, I'm uh, <laughs> like I've, uh, I've, I guess I've done my uh, fair share of uh, lore coverage, but yeah, uh, uh, more, more or less just you know, uh, just the uh, crossbone stuff because I, <laughs> I'm pretty big on crossbone. I love crossbones. I want to get more into it, but it's like I, I kind of committed to this kind of like timeline and oh, going yeah. through it really. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the biggest appeals, crossbone wise, for me is that yes, it's uh, it's basically it's in a lot of ways just you know 90s schlocky fun, but at the same time it has something uh, something to say. Yes, uh, kind I agree. of. Uh, like that, that's, agree. that's the I guess. Uh, Big uh, appealing thing with uh, mainly the UC Gundam at large, where mm -hmm. it, uh, I guess, uh, talks about the various aspects of human condition. Absolutely, yeah. It's always about, you know, at, at the heart of it, you know, you get this central theme of like 
war is bad, but what, what does it actually entail? Does it, it's, it's, it goes into a nuance, right? Is it, it's like we, we see characters that are, that are evil, but also, like, loving to their... War is bad, Mukai. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could have done a better Mr. Mackey impression. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. <laughs> War's bad. Okay. Um. But yeah, you get that. Uh. You get those themes throughout all. All of you see all of it, and even even the AU's as well. Uh. You get those central themes of just this nuanced approach to life, where people have these values that they're willing to die for, fight for, kill for, while others see them as wretched. Others see them as a way of peace, or maybe a way, a path to freedom, or whatever it is. For them, it's always something, but in the end, it comes to conflict between man, more or less. Yeah, that's, and that's, uh, that's always the heart of it, and that's cool. Yeah. And, uh, and to kind of narrow uh, down the topic at, uh, at hand, uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to Zeta, I really, uh, like, to sort of, you know, sidetrack towards Zeta, okay. I really like uh, how... Uh, how they did the characters, I, uh, I'm not sure <laughs> if I will ever be able to, uh, you know, work around like the op the open spots in Midnight Hair's schedule. But I really want to pick his brains about it because yeah. I really like the man's insights on the uh, Camille and the pl plot he's, details he's, at large. He's, he's a, it's it's makes sense, right? Like yeah. it is like the 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 sequel, like what he what Midnight Hatter says is like. This is the sequel that actually it actually does what the original does plus more. It is it's not just you see most sequels whether it's movies, TV, anime, whatever. It's always just the same thing again, maybe with a little bit more. This adds on top of it. We explore our characters more. We explore the understanding of new types to a better understanding than what we did with Amaro, and we we see the development of these these characters overall. And then it really, it really hits on every kind of quadrant. I feel, and it, I, I get where Midnight Hatter's coming from, where it's like it, it, it really is the true sequel to, yep. to them. And, and then, um, yeah, I get uh, it. I like it. Yeah, same. Like it has a lot of uh, fun characters, which are really good, really fleshed out. Beat Camille, mm -hmm. beat uh, Quattro. You know, uh, even the, like I like Yazad because he's uh, he's just. Nuts. He's bloodthirsty. He he's basically a uh, a more fun version of Rakan uh, Rakan from uh, <laughs> Double Zeta. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. He's goofy. He's over the top, and I uh, that's that's what <laughs> ma uh, makes me uh, like Yaza in, in both absolutely, Zeta yeah. and Double Zeta. And you know, like yeah. oh, go ahead. Oh, but... um... <laughs> oh perfect timing. <laughs> But yeah, um, like even the uh, characters that people don't like, they're <laughs> feasibly written, you know, notoriously, uh, uh, you know, people don't like Rico, justifiably so, because, uh, like, because of what she, yeah. what she does, what, uh, what she has done, and how she double crosses yeah. the main crew, but at the same time, she is very feasibly written, and that's, that's Absolutely. one of the big, uh, big qualities that, uh, I guess Domino is known for. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Everything she was up to... See, I, I, I like the nuance of Rekua up to the point where she starts gassing and committing genocide. And, like, <laughs> I can't get on board, but, like, her justification for leaving, that all makes sense, and, like, why, like, she wasn't being heard, and, like, no one was hearing her feelings and whatnot, and her reasons for leaving the AU for the Titans all make sense. Once she starts, you know, yeah, committing to genocide, I kind of... You lose me a little bit, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's fair. It works. It works though. Like uh, <laughs> in a in a handful of episodes, it's also that you know established that she's the type of person that likes living on the edge. Uh, even yes. from her, uh, even from her upbringing, she, if I recall correctly, she uh, was with some anti Zeon guerrillas fighting in colonies. Yes, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I guess it, it went, it, uh, from there. Like, uh, I've, uh, yeah. I've noticed that a lot of, uh, uh, characters that, you know, were in, uh, were in, uh, like, the mainline, uh, entries, 
it had a really big impact. Like you know, you could trace a line from uh, from Char to his various clones. You could trace a line from Rekoa to Katagina losing victory. And mm -hmm. uh, speaking of yeah. uh, speaking of uh, you know Zeta to victory lines, Peptimus Rocco, the man <laughs> from Jupiter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, well, like he's, in my opinion, he's a very good introduction to a lot of the eccentric individuals from that region, you know, as we see in uh, Crossbone. But uh, funnily enough, also in Victory, in uh, Fons Dogati. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you know, both are men from, uh, men from Jupiter, both uh, you know, yeah. preach that. Uh, they uh, shall have uh, their little kingdom of new types, both, uh, mm -hmm. you know, aim to, uh, I guess, uh, put women at the helm of it, while at the same time being sort of the main puppet masters all along. True. It's yeah. Very interesting. I wonder what that is. I wonder if it's a, a that eccentrism, that, that kind of that attitude towards kind of manipulation and the ruling class type of... Uh, attitude is that like you i wonder if it's living off world you know not even they're not even in the earth sphere you know colonists are still part of the earth sphere they're still part of kind of what's going on you know they oh, got yeah, the internet. they're still hanging out with everyone at least communicating online and whatnot but the people in jupiter and them they're they're probably i'm sure they're connected there's there's a vague uh, Dude, you really like, gotta read Ooh. crossbone because it yeah. touches on that yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta reread it. I did read it. I just gotta go back and it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, because that's the thing. But the eccentrism is still there, right? You know, they're, they're, it's so detached, at least with this Paptimus, right? And he's, yeah. he, he's just, uh, especially with his, like, touchy feeliness with the women. He likes that. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I'd say the best description for, uh, for uh, Peptimus, I'd say is that he he likes to use people, like in I guess many way many senses of the word. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, he's definitely very manipulative, right? He's trying to get what he wants for what he needs, right? How he uses Requa, how he uses uh, Sarah, Sarah, yes, and and all the all the new types and all the other people. Um, in the Titans, you know, how he's kind of manipulating, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh Ask. Um, Ask yeah. and Hyman. Yeah, oh, yeah, just both. trying to do what he needs. Um, and it's, it's, it's fascinating watching. And even like, just, he, he doesn't even use, you know, like Titan or AE, or sorry, not AE. I have, uh, I have, uh, <laughs> Cosmic Era on the brain. Um, <laughs> EFF, but like, he doesn't use like EFF mobile suits, right? He has his own thing he has his own ships he has his own uh his own mobile suits his own mobile armor so he's kind of in his own world in many ways right definitely divided definitely putting himself on a higher pedestal i feel as the titans themselves who is already putting themselves on a pretty high pedestal oh yeah <laughs> uh elitism it's, it's fun fun times and you see that in, like, Glimmy Toto, too, where what he's doing with uh, Judo's sister, right, Lena. He just kind of, like, grooms her a little bit, where he's always trying to make her dress her up. And she's, like, making her do, like, uh, gymnastics and, like, play the piano. And it's, like... Oh, yeah, it's, he's, it's... he's trying to make her into uh, his own little baby Maneva, I guess. Yeah. That's the best way to put it. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got, the, uh, we got all the way to Double Zeta. Great! <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I, I really like Double Zeta. Like not as much as Igloo and Victory, but uh, it's it's got that uh, Tomino esque goofiness on top of I it. I on top it. of a I lot of it. oh sorry. I was anyway. just gonna say I just I think people just hate the 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 big shift from Zeta, the 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 mind craziness that was Zeta, and then the shift to wackiness. But if you didn't have that big shift, I think people would be on board more so. Yeah, Honestly. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. It works. It yeah, works. it it works, and it like uh, there's uh, moments like oh, I know that the Moon Moon arc is goofy, but you know that mm -hmm. piece kind of you know still yeah. does its part in the lore, especially with you know how 
certain colonies that are kind of isolated from the Federation, how they operate. Mm -hmm. You have, uh, for example, the uh, Tigerbaum colony, which yeah, they, they, <laughs> there's a whole new level of lawlessness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, even the even the Neo, uh, I guess, not not Neo Zeon. Uh, even the Zeon remnants on Earth and the disarray uh, within yes. their ranks during kind of the I guess the Desert Arc is, uh, you know, it. Uh, I guess uh, it's a beat that echoes later on, both with uh, both with early. Well, both with like its sequels and uh, yeah. such, because you see uh, like uh, Neo Zeon groups all the way in uh, F ninety. Yeah. On, yeah. You know, with the Mars like, Zeon, and the uh, guy there too. If you go all the way, oh, like that. From, yeah, like, it's uh, like I know, Karen? I know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's those, uh, those ideals last. I mean. There's Even the, the remnants, right? They, they. Yeah. I think the one of UC's biggest problems was after the One Year War, which I think was retconned in uh, Unicorn, but it was that they they gave uh, essentially they were going to absorb the uh, Zeon Republic back into the Federation by UC one hundred, right? I think that was the biggest mistake they made. They gave them like a twenty year like grace period to try to. <laughs> Get another uprising, essentially. You know, if they, I think they should have just, if they made that absorption, we would have had, we still would have had those Zeon remnants. It would have been closer to like a Hathaway era kind of terrorist organization just earlier on, I feel. There wouldn't be these like all out wars. There would be more kind of these like local insurgencies more so. Yeah, maybe. I suppose it would be a tad more decentralized. Then again, you know, Zeon had like all sorts of. Hideouts, all sorts of contingency plans. True. Like, Axis is still out there, right? So yeah, <laughs> Garden of Thorns, Granada. Garden of Thorns. I still that still trips me out that there's so much just debris and destruction out there that you could just hide and no one will ever find <laughs> you. That's kind of crazy. I don't know if that's like a plot thing or if that's like that makes sense from like if you think about space and how grand it is. Yeah, like, it makes sense. That you wouldn't be able to find someone. And that's the thing I mean, with the scale, yeah. the, the sheer scale of space. Yeah, it's 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 insane. It is insane. Um, oh yeah. But yeah. You mentioned you mentioned one thing that you you are actually a fan of Igloo, right? You're a big fan of it because I'm not. Yeah, I I really like Igloo because uh, I get it uh, does a lot of its characters justice. For example, like one of the uh, characters that I often point to as a really good, really well characterized character, <laughs> banfully mm -hmm. intended, uh, would be Demazir Sonen from, uh, I think it's the episode uh, 2 of the Hidden One Year War. Okay. Is that the uh, the test pilots, that uh, the diver one? No, that's Werner Holbein. Uh, the one that I have in mind is is the Hildolfer guy. Oh, the Hildolfer guy. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because, yes. I mean, uh, you kind of see it uh, in the, the show, I, in, I suppose, kind of introduction to him, how he's, uh, he's basically there as basically a man out of time. He's, like, everyone's switching to mobile suits. He's He's left behind yeah. as a tank guy, and, uh, you know, yeah. at first you see him completely miserable, but then uh, when he, yes, it is a suicide mission that he has been given, but, you know, he's, uh, he, uh, I guess, finds, uh, find jo uh, finds joy in what he does again, and, you know, then he gets into the, uh, gets into the groove of, of it, and actually, you know, the, does a whole lot of great work. And uh, I guess prote mm -hmm. protecting uh, Oliver and uh, Monique and the Komasai. Right, and it was it was pretty tragic. A lot of a lot of what happens in Igloo is kind of bittersweet, right? Um, yep. But it's yeah, yeah. I remember he was just trying to prove his worth as a tank pilot, uh, or a tank uh, a tanker, and uh, show that it's still kind of valuable in, a, in an era yep. of of Gundams, and ultimately lost his life because of it. Yep. 
pretty pretty good stories yeah i wish people would be able to get over the animation and the art i get it uh, i yeah because i mean the story of the <laughs> space knight weighed down by gravity that is a pretty good story it is it is so great i dig it i really dig the uh the last one with the with the uh defense of abaku with uh, like uh with the big ring and uh, how they no, no, no. Oh. one of the the one that was still in Odessa uh, with the uh, uh oh the MS Igloo to uh yeah Arlene's story oh yeah yes where she's uh she goes up against essentially her lover right and and he was uh he defected yeah and um, uh, even the oh go ahead yeah he, uh, she just rams the uh dog day where she uh, where he is in and you know she's you know, prepared to detonate it, it you know, over the comlink, she's getting orders left and right to not do it, to, to do it, something yeah. else, because the the guy who who defected is apparently a, a fed mole, but, uh, but she's like, fuck it. Yeah, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like someone could have told her, but what? Yeah. Um. Anyways, but yeah, I, the, I don't the, think that. Like oh. oh, go I ahead. Don't know. She, just her, just the the the. the her unfortunate kind of like that that shows kind of like how war kind of like pushes someone to the edge almost. To yeah, where I suppose. Her lover almost. <laughs> but you know, uh, I'd but say I guess that. It pretty, pretty yeah, and in a lot of ways that uh, it uh, kind of shows uh, Arlene's you know single mind and this, this, her you know I guess hyper fix, uh, fixation on the. Go at the expense of everything, which yes. you know. After she gets out of the tank and uh, and goes to see the sunlight, you know, eventually costs her her life. Which you know, that's that's the thing with Iglu. Yes. It uh, yes. it gives you a moment of triumph before sweeping it away. Except for the last episode of uh, Apocalypse Double O Seventy Nine, which is just bittersweet. Yeah, yeah, they all get to. Uh... Escape early summer, most little small amount of them. Small, I mean, very minimal <laughs> amount of people. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, no one's gonna miss Herbert. Herbert, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it is a uh, it is a story of like these these people that are, especially with the the uh, what's it, the test core? I forgot the uh, the six o third technical evaluation unit. Yep, six o third. Yeah, um, yeah, like. Oliver May is, is he's trying, right? As a Zeon soldier, he's trying his best, knowing that like his his kind of higher ups are not really caring as much and ultimately being incompetent, but he himself is giving it his all. And it's it's kind of it's sad and but like bittersweet, as I said earlier. It's kind yeah. Of fortunate. Yeah. It's such a shame that people skip things like double Zeta Victory and Igloo. It's it's like the holy yeah. trifecta of getting skipped. But, you know, <laughs> at the same time, you know, so be it. Double Zeta skippers don't deserve nice things. I'm putting my foot down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. Um, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, what's your favorite kind of, uh, I guess... Story. If you're going from like a story perspective, what's your what's your favorite Gundam story? It's a really that's yeah, a really tricky question. Is uh, like there's a lot of good ones. Mm -hmm. like, uh, you have, uh, for example, the story of Blue Destiny, which I really like because you know there's mm -hmm. a, I guess a great deal of uh, parallels between Nimbus and you and how. Uh, how both men are kind of led by mm -hmm. the nose by uh, by the exam system, and yeah. how uh, basically what's left of uh, uh, what was her name, Marion? Uh, how uh, basically what's left of uh, Marion? Essentially, you know, uh, I guess uh, pulls uh, you away from uh, the from being consumed by it like Nimbus. Right, right. With, uh, I guess the exam obsession ending is uh, the unit two explodes, the unit three explodes as well because uh, mm -hmm. you know as uh, Nimbus states, uh, he ain't dying alone. 
<laughs> Madman. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Blue Destiny is a good one. Yeah. Um, uh, we're going through it and on my uh, channel currently. I think we're just two. We're just like the first volume in, but uh, yeah, I need to get back to that. It's been a while. I need to re, re, re read that again. Yeah, you need three up the dose of Blue Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good, good one. Oh. Go I was gonna uh, say I was a big fan of. Have you read uh, the plot to assassinate Garen? Oh, not yet. Oh, that is that is yeah. like it's so unique and so different and so it's not mobile suit focused at all. Although there is a nice. Yeah, I know. I look. I I, I have the plot it. summary, the fifty-one uh, <laughs> unit one. I have it's... it bookmarked. I have it for like a day. When I'm gonna just lounge in my chair, do nothing, do literal nothing, and I'm gonna listen to it. It's all right, all right. It's yes. one of my plans. Well, you, know, but... you know when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one. Um, other than that, um, character-wise, uh, let's see, what's what's good. I really, really like the characterization of uh, Camille overall. If we're going like main Gundam oh, timeline, yeah. early Gundam. Just, just like diving into that that character, I feel bad that it was made in the '80s because he gets beat up a lot. <laughs> uh, it, it's good, like he, him, expo like just him, just exploring love, like being able to like fall in love with four and using that to be able to actually express how he feels with Fa. In many ways, he needed someone to kind of help him. She was kind of like that manic pixie dream girl to him. <laughs> kind of helped yep. him uh, get kind of get to where he needed i guess like romantically um that was cool that was cool yeah. and uh, that's something i didn't see really too much growing up uh at least in western stuff western uh oh yeah animations and, and whatnot so that that was really unique and i i really dug that uh you know and the whole aspect of him being you know like this unique new type autistic kid <laughs> was this like was, was was interesting it was just new and interesting at the time uh the time being for me like late 90s early 2000s when i originally picked this up and read it or watched it oh yeah for the first like uh... um but yeah yeah i really i really dig the characterization of camille i really wish they would explore i want to see a camille type character explored kind of in a modern day gundam because we get we get like Lately, we get, like, uh, Witch from Mercury, you get the, the kind of, like, the bumbling, lovable character, which is very a very popular cliche of a character. But I want to see that Camille-type character again, just explored in kind of a modern-day setting. I'm gonna go with the troll answer, and I'm gonna recommend you uh, Armored Trooper Bottoms. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Because, I mean, right. Churko QV is uh, kind of also you know, kind of in the same... Uh, I guess half artist, half fighter groove. Right. Okay. And he's uh, he really, I guess uh, the person uh, writing that show really kind of, I guess uh, nails down the, you know, the I guess the emotionally distant nature of uh, okay. of the protag. Wow, that's. Ooh, this is interesting. It looks a lot like uh, what's it called, uh, like Super Troopers or something uh, that Heinlein would do. Uh, Starship Troopers, or yeah, so uh, yeah. Did I say Super Troopers? <laughs> <laughs> Super Troopers. <laughs> Just like that comedy movie. Um, no, yeah, uh, Starship Troopers. Oh, Kunio Kawada does the. Oh yeah. Too. Wow, I'm digging. All right, uh, this is going on my list. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta check this out. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. And on the note of, uh, oh yeah, and on the note of uh, like gun stories that I like, mm -hmm. there's a whole lot like. I really enjoyed, for example, the the original story in Cross Dimensions. Mm hmm Because, uh, I really liked that one. Uh, like, not because it, uh, it doesn't have any, like, super deep f uh, themes. It's just one yeah. guy in a Gobi desert uh, <laughs> stuck sure. under, you know, crappy brass and, you know, trying to do his best to protect the base. Even kind of yeah. back in orders and piloting the pixie and and uh, you know the the whole thing kind of escalating to the point where at the end of the story he's just stuck in there in a de uh, in a damaged pixie and uh, and Saki Graham who you know who's a Zeon soldier and one of the few survivors of that thing 
it's a uh, yeah. I guess it uh, also has a bit of bittersweet ending, but uh, I guess yeah. the missing uh, link slash side story remake was a bit heavy-handed in the adaptation, and yeah, they changed a couple things, which I'm not necessarily a fan of. But yeah, like uh. best stated, there's there's a lot of Gundam that I really enjoy, especially in the UC department. I do like some of the AU entries as well, but not as much as you see. I, I like... What's your favorite out of the AUs? Well, that's, that's a tricky question. Cause, like, it's, like, cause it, it's hard to pick a favorite, not because, you know, they'd be like, super outstanding, but like, uh, most of them are just fun for what they are. Sure. You have Wing, you have uh, G Gundam for that, you know, sort of a uh, 90s schlock, which I really enjoy. Yeah. You have uh, Gundam X, which, you know, it tries to tries to be this, this post-apocalypse, post uh, where's <laughs> uh, this sort of post-apocalypse Gundam, but without right. the bleakness of something like Violence Jack or Mad Max, of which, you know, I, I'm the type that would, uh, <laughs> that sh- yeah, probably yeah. should uh, <laughs> go read uh, read up on the, uh, you know, Violence Jack, because, you know, I, I guess that's, uh, that's with the, like, that's the thing with, uh, I guess, Tomino's uh, genera- mm. uh, generation of uh, writers, you know, the, the one that has uh, Gona guy in it, where mm. they just write really good stories, and they're not really shy about a lot of uh, a lot of elements. You know, they they don't really you know give uh, give a damn about you know people giving them weird looks for or you know adding uh, no, adding no. in gore or you know, mature themes to a mature show. Absolutely, yeah. But still, like, a- able to be consumed by, like, a teenager, or, like, a yeah, younger person. Yeah, like, it's, uh... And learn about these things, which is cool. Except for Thunderbolt, which is, like, <laughs> just mis- <laughs> everyone, and, like, let's everyone suicide. <laughs> everyone is missing limbs, and war is, like, crazy, yeah. Yeah, Thunderbolt's, <laughs> like, from, from what I've read, uh, Thunderbolt is, uh, fun for what it is, but... Yeah. Yeah, you, you can kind of see, uh... You know, Yasuo Tagaki <coughs> kind of, you know, hemming certain things up, which, you know, I, absolutely. It, it, honestly, like, I can't really complain because I, I like when the story go, sometimes goes a bit shit and a, a bit, you know, insane. That's why I love, love things like, you know, Clockwork Orange, Death Wish, yeah, Apocalypse okay. Now, Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, the movies, all good choices. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really into uh lately I'm trying to think. AU wise, I'm really into I think I'm just I'm not I'm trying to think. I, I everything is going cosmic era because I've been doing way too much cosmic era, but I'm like, that's not it. That's not it. <laughs> it's on my mind. Get it out of my mind. Um, <laughs> uh, but I'm really digging a lot of Wing uh, lately. I thought I would hate it, and I actually did hate it when I first started it, but I'm starting to come back around on, on it and lean into the ridiculousness of it all. Mainly because um, I'm past all the, the slock of, of it. <laughs> like, the first um, what, 18, 20 episodes is really... It's, it's rough. It's rough. I get why people don't like it. But once you get back out into space and people are starting to do stuff again, <laughs> make the moves, uh, things start to get pick up. And the wackiness doesn't stop, but it's still good. I enjoy it for for its Shakespearean silliness. Yeah, I guess uh, like one of uh, one of my buddies, he uh, who I some, uh, sometimes I did for, uh, he summed it up the best with the style of wing storytelling, is that mm-hmm. uh, it's. Uh, it's a it's a Gundam show written like a stage play. Yeah, in a lot of ways. Absolutely, absolutely, definitely. 
Um, you're big on the like the Gundam video games, so that's one part I'm like oh, yeah. blind to. Uh, I wanna I wanna dive more into that. If if you were to give one recommendation for a Gundam, let's say you see video game, which which one would you recommend the most? Oh, that's a we'll that's a tough question. But... Oh, well, I'd probably ask what the what genre appeals to you the most, and you know, I, I can definitely give you some pointers, but you know, I generally like to you know hear some criteria beforehand. Okay, okay, let's see, let's see, what type of games am I into? I could go for let's see, let's go with like. Is there any, like, good turn-based strategy? Oh, yeah. There's a whole lot. Okay. Like, I of course... That, that would be my jam, I, I think. You're, you're probably familiar with things like SD Gun G Generation, right? Yes. Yeah, definitely. That's, uh... I've played a little bit of that. It is, uh... There's quite a handful of, uh... Those in that department. Of course, there's also, uh... <laughs> uh... Gundam Cross Dimensions 0079, that is technically a uh, turn-based, uh, I guess, a grid strategy. You could go okay. for... Uh... That's Super NES? Oh yeah, Super okay. NES. And cool. of course, uh, cause you can also uh, run the game uh, SD Gundam uh, Gash Upon Wars on uh, Dolphin, or the or any <laughs> Nintendo GameCube uh, device at hand. I think it's also uh, compatible with Wii, but it's uh, it's a uh, sort of an action strategy, I'd say. Okay. Ooh, I like the I like the kind of cel shadedness of it. I guess uh, I guess the best way to describe it is that you know you you have your turn based turf war thingy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for some reason it uh, it also. In, I guess incorporates a bit of a turf war element, but the uh, I guess the core of the fun, the brunt of the fun is had when the, when the individual units fight each other, because instead of uh, you know having to just go through uh, fighting animations, you're uh, given uh, the con uh, you're given the control to the mobile suit itself, and you're kind of duking it out with the opponent in an arena. It's really, it's okay. really fun. That looks cool. I might have to check this one out. I still have my GameCube, I think, somewhere. But I'm not it. <laughs> overall, I guess for starters' recommendations, there's Gundam vs. Zeta. That's a classic. Mm -hmm. Or Zionic Front. Heard of that one? Another good one. Okay. And I mean, oh. like there's there's a whole lot of stuff. There's some on the Wonderswan uh, color and Wonderswan where you know you, you get to play with. Uh, there's a game called Kido Senshi Gundam Volume One because, of course, uh, <laughs> we are Bandai. We name uh, we have named I think four or five games literally just uh, Kido Senshi Gundam. Like there's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's one certain uh, game, if I recall correctly, uh, called Kido Senshi Gundam, which is a uh, more or less a beat 'em up game. There's uh, <laughs> this uh, top down, uh, top down uh, semi turn based semi, uh, I guess real time game called Kido Senshi Gundam, and there's also a, I guess a an arcade Kuso gay game. Which whose sequel is called EX Review? That's where you got the Dommel. Mm. which is also called Kido Senshi Gundam. <laughs> of course, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, making it easy, of course. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's a lot of games. All right, I got I got a lot of homework to do game wise. I, I got, <laughs> got a lot. Of, you know. I also want to do. I've been reading Rise from the Ashes, and I know that's a video game too. That's oh yeah. Probably. It's on Dreamcast. Play. Yeah. In fact, I really should get to emulate in Dreamcast because it ha that platform has uh, Rise from the Ash. It is. It has the. Uh, it has one Berserk game. It has. Uh, what should I call it? The Jet Set Radio. 
Just of course, radio, yeah. Soul Calibur. There's a whole lot of stuff that uh, on uh, Dreamcast, uh, yeah, Dreamcast that I should get to play, uh, get around to playing. Yeah, that. Yeah, it was a there was it was there was a lot of unique games. I know uh, you could even uh, what's it, what's it called? Uh, I can't think of it. You could, like hack it and put uh, ROMs on it back in the day, like early. It was like one of the first. Uh, uh, I guess consoles that uh, I saw a lot of people hacking, which was interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Shinmu. I forgot about Shinmu too. Oh that yeah. Was a good game. Dreamcast. A lot of, a lot of hidden gems there. Yep. You know, uh, come to think of it, you know, when you mentioned the, <laughs> the sort of, I guess the homework part of yeah. uh, doing Gundam mm -hmm. stuff. I've been. Mm -hmm. uh, Guess delving into various rabbit holes around uh, Gundam games, because uh, uh -huh. there's been some, uh, I guess, uh, requests from channel supporters for uh, for me to cover like Mobile Suit Origin, well, <laughs> game original Mobile Suits, and mm. uh, I went down, admittedly, a huge rabbit hole around in an, SC an SNES game by the name of. Uh, SD Gundam G next. You know, it's a uh, somewhat unassuming uh, grid strategy released in uh, 1995. I really like it because that uh, just like in the case of uh, SD Gundam Gash Upon Wars for the GameCube, it uh, has the sort of the command, uh, the combat thing uh, be interactive. So. That's a really fun one. I, I know you're not gonna get a lot of uh, story mileage off of that one, but yeah, it it is very fun. Okay, I'll have to check this one out too. But yeah, that. I like that too. The thing with that one is that uh, it had, uh, I, I suppose, what's the best way? To, it had expansions. It is had, that why it has that weird cartridge thing? I'm looking at the cartridge. Oh yeah. Uh, that, the top part. Like, like it, uh, that? it had a uh, unit and the map pack, uh, which was sold in retail, and it also okay. had some uh, things uh, that could be downloaded via the Satellaview thing. You know the <laughs> the weird oh, SNES gimmick yeah. that is uh, fairly disastrous it, for uh, game preservation because uh, you know some uh, limited release things were like uh, oh, released like, solely like, on it. Oh, yep, yeah. Just All like people. Played it. That's all we know. Nothing else. No yeah, that, footage. No that message. thing's oh, a nightmare maybe. to track down. Damn! Someone has to have that somewhere. <laughs> Cause I had, I have the unit pack, but I don't yeah. have the, I don't have a lot of the downloadable things. Uh. Out of which I've only managed to find the convert. I guess confirmation, uh, uh, confirmed versions. Yeah. <laughs> that, as the word I was right. looking for, um, the confirmed versions of I think. Hold up, let, let me think. <laughs> My brain just uh, <laughs> it it committed Sudoku, but oh no! <laughs> <laughs> if I recall correctly, the three uh, units that I I found like completely confirmed as downloadable were the S Gundam from Gundam Sentinel. The D Gundam third from Double Fake, which funnily enough, mm. like that game has uh, units from Double Fake in the form of Jagan Kai, the Zasa Kai, and the Drossy Kai. Okay. It's a pretty cool piece of trivia. And it also, yeah. funnily enough, had a playable, uh, playable version of uh, Tsushin Hamamura, who was the editor in chief of Famitsu at the time. Ooh, okay. Interesting. And yes, his. Uh, if I recall correctly, where I uh, read it, it was that it was mentioned that his weapon was the beam sashimi. It was some beam sashimi or something. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is like supreme levels of goofy, <laughs> which. Uh, I'm always down for the goofiness. Yes, that's. It's uh, I guess uh, you know I I like to say that uh, uh, Gundam uh, yes usually you know at its best when it's a uh, blend of uh, serious and slapstick. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it has yeah. to have both, right? It can't be take itself too seriously, um, but it can't go all in on the comedy too, which yeah. a lot of people think Double Zeta does, but I don't think it does. I don't think it does either. It's just that yeah. it uh, it is very subtle with uh, with the more serious parts uh, uh, yeah. initially, and that's like it it is good that it is more subtle with it, but at the same time. You know, uh, people who get uh, like tone shocked with the initial goofiness. I, I, I think it does a bit of a disser, a, a bit of a disservice to those people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, Unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, you know, uh, since uh, I have you on the show, I've been looking into the uh, free speech geek site because you're you're not uh, on Twitter. Uh, Slash X. I, I don't call it X. It's uh, it's a weird ass name, but <laughs> uh, you're not on the on them bird apps as uh, as simple <laughs> utop. Your air is free speech geek, yes. and I yeah. I had uh, looked into uh, sort of uh, the site associated with it, and you know, uh, uh, care to uh, enlighten us on uh, what uh, is uh, what are the efforts of Free speech geek, uh, kind of, you know. Sure. So it's around. just kind of like a, a umbrella of everything I do. Uh, Simply new types are part of that, as well as all the X Men stuff that I do. But ultimately, it is a a, a group of uh, it's me and a few friends that are just kind of go out to cons and we we talk to cosplayers, we talk to fans, and we just kind of like interview people, get get kind of the temperature of what people are feeling towards. Uh, certain fandoms and whatnot, as well as make like little comedy uh, breakdowns of uh, random things. Right now we're going through X-Men at the moment. Um, and we also occasionally podcast uh, uh, about X-Men and some other stuff as well. But ultimately it's just a group of people uh, going to cons, mainly in the Southern California area of the United States. And uh, we're just kind of just hanging out, seeing what kind of the collective feel of geek culture is at the moment more or less and we 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 do it in a blog form but we're kind of moving away from that as you can see by the website's not as active as much and moving more towards like video format uh as of late and hopefully we'll be getting out a lot more cool stuff soon like i said we just talked to a lot of the people that uh made the x-men animated tv show so that should be interesting uh hopefully we'll be able to put that out soon um and a lot of cool interviews coming out soon so that's cool yeah that's pretty much what it is oh yeah and i i also see that there's you know you mentioned you know the whole diy hacking with the dreamcast and uh there's also a mention of uh sort of you know I guess uh, tampering with uh, efforts to you know do stuff with hardware and sort of the right to repair thing. Which... Yes, absolutely. We've been kind of lacking on content for that as of late. We need to get back on that. But yes, that is kind of like a core uh, feature of the website. We used to get into a lot of just uh, being able to just do your own thing, whatever it is for the most part, whether it be you know repairing your own uh whatever like you should what if you buy something you should have sole ownership of it it started i talked about this on uh on gonna explained or no sorry midnight hatter that uh oh, yeah hatter that, live um, the wednesday yeah. show <laughs> that like it, it kind of started uh, when we talked a lot about like mcdonald's uh, a lot of these uh Places ice cream machine the, yep ice cream machines they like the people who own them that are franchising them out do not have access or rights to repair them on their own they have to use mcdonald's approved mechanics and all this stuff and all is it's it's just drm t- to death oh yes yeah, and and like it, that's kind of where it started right and that like it branched out from there and like especially like with what's going on with like uh, the kind of like the people creating these new pocket PCs, it's kind of making, uh, and it's the reason why I never bought a Switch. Like, you can make a better Switch. Like, what Oh yeah, that's, the, that's what true. Nintendo, what Nintendo is putting out to the consumer is just so inferior to what someone else could do with their software. Of course. It's crazy to you. you know, funny that you mention it is, you know, I uh, started uh, sort of, uh, you know, looking up stuff on, uh, on the whole right to repair stuff. About uh, seven to eight years ago, because I 
I think, you know, in 2017, 2016, there was a, uh, there was an Apple case around that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh. you know, at first that, like, um, I, uh, I was honestly really, you know, taken aback by the fact that, you know, having the right to what you actually own is, uh, is not a given. Yeah. <laughs> That's... That's unfortunate, yeah. yeah. I had a I had an old 2010 MacBook, and I loved it because I could I could remove the RAM. I was able to take out the hard drives. I could take out the CD drive and put a second hard drive in it if I wanted to. I could upgrade the memory. Uh, and then, you know, what is it, like 2012-ish came along, and they started just soldering everything into the Mac. I'm like, well, this this is useless now to me, at least to me. That's how I felt. I was like, and, which is unfortunate. I was... I was I enjoyed Macs for what they were at the time, um, and they they were pretty cool for mobile devices, and 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 especially their MacBook Pros at the at the time around 2010. But now it's like, what do you what you get for your money is just it feels like a scam. It feels like everyone's just trying to pinch every freaking dollar out of you. Oh yeah, and there's there's insane. been a whole lot of yeah, there's been a whole lot of like overreaching. In this regard, on the part of like, large companies, in a lot of ways, like bit Nintendo, whose lit uh, whose litigiousness makes Church of Scientology blush, <laughs> or you know Apple's planned obsolescence on their products, <laughs> yeah. the whole you know the whole forcing people to rely on proprietary uh, proprietary stuff, you know, be the uh, some of uh, I guess localization studios who. <laughs> Who you know insert their own crappy quips and stuff into the things that they're supposed to, you know, translate and distribute, or you know, the, the big uh, the elephant in the room, the the big name uh, yeah. in recent months, Sony. Yeah. Uh, oh. Oh boy. Oh boy. Boy. boy oh boy. boy, indeed. <laughs> Man, I don't even play. Uh, Helldivers and I was watching that whole fiasco just break out. That was ridiculous. That was insanity. And to think that that they would not get like they they could do that and not get any type of backlash is insanity. Oh yeah. <laughs> when it comes to dealing with Sony as a publisher, it's very like more often than not, it's a very Faustian bargain. Yeah. Not just because of their recent push for the. Uh, you know, PSN account linking and such, but because they also, you know, they they tie a lot of the uh, devs up in NDAs and then, you know, meddle with their uh, with their products. Y yes, you've seen it with the Tsukihime Studio, or mm -hmm. Shift Up to bring up another name, or even a lot of Japanese devs. Like the, yeah. the Helldivers thing, they fortunately reneged on, but well, there's... There's a whole lot of, uh, you know, the Helldivers 2 situations, exactly. which we unfortunately are either not privy to or can't really do much about. It's frustrating. Oh, it yeah. really is. Um, and even, like, things that aren't necessarily in the, the realm of, I guess, right to repair, but just, like, in this, like, tech penny pinching world. Uh, I just recently got a Radeon 78XT. I was just like, screw it, NVIDIA is t is giving me so little for how much they're offering. So I switched from an NVIDIA graphics card to a Radeon because I, I put my, my money where my mouth is. So hopefully I don't regret that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah. So far so good, though. Oh, nice, nice. Nice yeah. to hear that. Yeah. But yeah, things like that, you know. Like, I really wanted, like, a, a 4080, but, man, I just can't justify that price anymore. Like, at this time, I, I just can't do it. I uh, yes, uh, the hardware that, <laughs> unfortunately, has uh, adopted the model of Warhammer uh, Warhammer pricing. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. No. What world do we live in now? I don't even know. Yeah, uh, like, you know... Uh, Back when the, uh, back when I was a little kid, there, you know, when the uh, Lego minifigures uh, were starting out, oh mm -hmm. dude, they were so cheap. It was like two euros a pack, and now it's 
over twice as much. It's yeah. like, ah. Oh. Things get insane. Oh yeah, they they sure do. Yeah. yeah. I guess another topic, you know, in regards to sort of, you know, right to repair ad ad adjacent topics would be, you know, copyright. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, because like yeah, it's it's one of the things that in concept is a like. In concept, is a, it is a very, I guess, a noble thing to, you know, sort of define the boundaries of, like, intellectual property, so that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, things like large-scale uh, industrial plagiarism can't really, you know, sink, uh, sink an indie guy down the moment, you know, a corporation, desi you know, uh, I guess, finds their idea. But at the same time, you know, in recent years, yeah, oh, hell, <laughs> not uh, not in recent years, in re in I guess the recent century and a half, we've seen you know the house of the mouse uh, turn it uh, oh, into the hellscape. We've seen uh, as stated, uh, Nintendo being pretty nasty around uh, a pretty bad and one, stuff. Yeah. And, yeah, I think that like if it's abandoned, where like maybe you have like a lot, I, I like some type of law some i don't know the time frame uh some others could debate that some x amount of time frame to where if you're not profiting off of it if it's abandoned where it there should be no copyright on it and anyone should be able to use it for their own yeah yes. and we, we see this with a lot of like abandoned where right like oh yeah nothing like, Nothing's happening with certain things. You see that in the film industry too. There's these obscure, like really cool, like cheesy eighty movies that would love. I would love to see have a Blu-ray redistribution. But good luck getting those. Oh yeah, licensing. Movies. That's the. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's ridiculous. Just how oh, many? Yeah. That's that's an ordeal and a half. Or uh... you're going to destroy something, like literally erase it from history because you're holding on to it sometimes. Oh, I yep. mean, you know, like Nintendo, people are going to pirate it, so it's always going to be out there. It's going to be put in history. But like something smaller, someone else's project that no one oh, yeah. knows of, they're just holding on to it. Could make maybe, you know, some money here or there, but nothing ultimately that's going to get you anything. So you hold on to it and it just disappears forever. I remember that one time when... Uh... I think it was Rockstar who, I guess, yanked uh, the XCOM uh, thing fr from the public domain. And oh, really? What? Oh, yeah. And, uh... That's... That was nasty, because uh, that now means that a lot of the sites that used to host it uh, are now... Uh -huh. are now hosting just, you know, some kind of a mod for it instead, and you have to go out of your way to either find a torrent uh, with like uh, with the proprietary right. files or uh, buy the damn thing from Rockstar and it's it's <laughs> yeah like uh, I uh like the thing that I uh you know that is weird I don't... to make something then yeah. sorry to interrupt that is just so Bizarre that's something that's been out there for free in the public domain forever. And it's like, no, now we're, <laughs> yeah, now it's not deal with it. I don't get yeah, that. And you, once it's out there, I don't know. Anyways, that's that's yeah. dumb. Sorry, to interrupt. <laughs> that pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess the best way to, I guess, combat uh, uh, this sort of uh, like copyright uh, overreach would be would probably just be mass non compliance. It's true. Because, I mean, you know, <laughs> there probably won't be a day uh, anymore where, where you know, uh, anime torrent sites or, you know, the pirate bay. And right. it's uh, it's contemporary. It's, I don't think they're going away anytime soon, which is good. True. Yeah, which, uh, I don't see it. Yeah, and I really like yeah. the fact that, you know, uh, there's, uh, there's some cases where people, uh, where people just, you know, uh, just tell them to bugger off, and uh, they usually, you know, are out of uh, out of uh, the you know, jurisdiction where uh, where DMCA yeah. isn't the king, and that's yeah. how a lot of uh, media is both, I guess, preserved and dis uh, distributed. 
Yeah. Like for, yeah. The, for the longest time, uh, such was the case with uh, the internet uh, archive, but uh, certain somebody, <clears throat> Chuck Wendig, had a bit of a tantrum and... <laughs> Uh, yeah. 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 Like, pardon my French, but that guy can go F himself. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but I digress. So. <laughs> we've, uh, <laughs> we've drifted a tad, uh, a tad too far from the topic. So, I wonder. Yeah, I'm back to Gundam. We go. Back to Gundam, All but right. like without uh, without swerving too much, in fact, you know, like on the topic of um, of the whole media preservation thing, it mm -hmm. is kind of related to copyright. I did manage to track uh, to track down a certain DVD, uh, a certain DVD ROM, which was a limited release, which came out with uh, with the is the Gundam G Generation Mono Eye Gundam's game for the Wonders One in two thousand two, and okay. uh, hopefully it will be imported uh, my way uh, in a reasonable time frame. Then again, I uh, no. know because I have not really looked into how long does it take for uh, sites like Buy to uh, right. to get stuff my way. Yeah, might be a while. <laughs> Yeah, it might be a while, but like the tracking site says, yeah. you know what? I'll, I'm gonna go check it. Uh, just bear with me. It shouldn't, uh, <laughs> shouldn't take too long. I'm just gonna. Just get up. How is uh, like the postal service in your area? Typically good. Ours is pretty. Oh, it's pretty good, decent. Like for things from China, that's usually the case. For a Maybe. while, I uh, <laughs> the the gunpla I have. Currently, like more than a half of it is just straight up imported from Hobby Link Japan. Ah, nice. Okay. So I did. Uh, like I was briefly in Japan, mm -hmm. and I snagged a couple boxes for very reasonable prices. So I've nice. got the uh, the Blue Destiny Unit One, and uh, I guess the FF uh, New Gundam. The Zaku 2 Revive and the Wing uh, Gundam's mm -hmm. box, which I'm currently nice. looking at on the oh, shelf nice. right behind me. Very nice. I'm jealous. <laughs> I, I wish I wish the restocks were more uh, more frequent, because I really really want okay. to give myself a Giradoga or like the RE100 Ifrit Kai. Ooh. The gear dogo would be cool. I'd be down for that. Yeah. Like, I'd save up for it and I'd, yeah, I'd get it. <laughs> money. So much money. Money wasted on plastic. Yeah. <laughs> and then the money to waste on shelves because you can't fit <laughs> any more yeah. Gundams on the shelf. And, the like, it's on the shelf. Oh, yeah. So then you gotta buy a bigger house. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's. I used to be like that with my books. Like, I have yeah. uh, like the room that I'm uh, that I currently occupy is like one, two, three. Yeah, that's like four bookshelves, four separate bookshelves, and I still uh, still have to uh, take some of the books and stack them on on top of the. Neatly organized rows to have space. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing with small book uh, bookcases, small bookshelves. Yeah. But yeah, like, uh, hopefully that thing uh, will come around soon, and I'll have some more stuff to talk about. <laughs> nice. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, um. Yeah, I wonder. What's a uh, like? Do you have a series that you'd really like to uh, cover? Like, if uh, if you didn't have to like go by, uh, I guess the chronological order, which series would you skip to? At least gun oh, wise, and, uh, you know, in terms of for sure. <laughs> crossbone, hundred percent easy, easy choice, going straight there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Definitely. Yeah, that's that's a fan favorite. Uh, that's the, Everyone asks me that, and that's also one I've been wanting wanting to get back to myself, and I've, I've been putting it off just because I'm waiting till we get to the series <laughs> to cover it, but I might have to just read it on my own just because I'm impatient, and then... Oh yeah, and then, and then I'll forget it, and then I'll go back to it, and then remember it again. <laughs> and then you're gonna get mad at the fact that uh, Ghost isn't fully translated. Does they ain't fully translated? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're gonna be stuck in, uh, stuck in the same rut as I am. <laughs> yeah, I hate those where you're like, "Hey, where's the rest?" <laughs> Good luck. Enjoy. Have fun with that. And you're just like, "Well, that sucks." <laughs> Well, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, other than, but uh, besides Crossbone, I also want to do Moon Gundam, which is coming up not too far from here. Well, oh, that'd be pretty I'm interesting. Excited. I'm excited for Moon Gundam. Yeah. I've been wanting to cover that one for a little bit. Like, uh, there's been a thing that, uh, on my mind uh, I really wanted to ask. Uh, how, uh, like, how many episodes do you usually split a, I guess, a series uh, into? Usually, like, uh, I want to say I put it's like each 10 minute episode is like f roughly four ish episodes of a series. So, like, if it's a 50 series episodes, I usually do like eight to, eight to ten videos for one whole series, something like that, which is about what, what would that be? Most of my videos are around 10 minutes, so. A full compilation. Let me look. If I they're look around, movie. yeah, fifty something, something minutes, sometimes longer. Yeah, like one twenty. Yeah. So I, it takes about like an hour or so to get through an entire series of just coverage, and it's still just vaguely touching the surface. I eventually want to go back around and do like kind of coverage on just individual mobile suits or characters, just to deep dive a little bit more because. There's a lot of things that I've definitely missed in my general coverage that I would like to go back to do. And uh, what about uh, what about uh, you know movies like, for example, Endless Waltz or F91 or things of that nature. You know, entries like which how, are yeah how be, I'm trying to think. So that would be like uh, I'm probably I could do a movie in like a twenty. I could sum it up into like a twenty minute video. So for example, I just did. Gundam Seed Freedom that just came out, um, and I was able to get about 18 minutes of out of that. Um, from what was that? That was about an hour and 40 minute movie. Um, so yeah, I was I, I was able to talk about 20 20 minutes or so to roughly summarize most of the mobile suits and the plot and details for the most part. I see. So, yeah, yeah, around tw I want to say 20 minutes or so. Sounds about right. Although, when I get to Char's Counterattack, I feel like I could talk, but I, I'll probably make that. That's probably going to be an hour long video, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, Char's Counterattack is pretty cool. Though, you know, I, I know myself well enough that I, I'm i not sure whether, I, whether I'd, uh, you know, step up to the plate and cover it because, you know, I know myself well enough to the point where, you know, every time Risen would, uh, Risen Schneider of Neo Zeon would appear on screen, I would probably insert some The Age of 30 is in demand memes. Because <laughs> oh, I love me some Zeon Space uh, Tom Boys. That's funny. Oh, he says. <laughs> yeah. Even, even as far as movies go, you know, you mm -hmm. have, uh,. <laughs> You have a lot of uh, movies that do manage to, I guess, stuff all of the grand the themes, both in UC and such. Uh, in, uh, hold up, uh, my brain's shutting off. Why? Uh, <laughs> he's losing it. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's losing it. <laughs> but, uh, regardless, it's like, you know, it's, it's pretty, uh, Break killed it, and you know, you can uh, kind of compress things into movies without, without I guess dulling certain things out. I don't yeah, mean I in can... uh, like I, I don't mm -hmm. mean uh, the, like the case of uh, compilation movies, of the original MSG mm -hmm. series, or you know Zeta Define, or. Uh, uh, the Afterglow of Zion, which which I think all three were very, very heavy-handed with 
all the stuff, artistic liberties, for better or worse. Yeah. I mean, things like uh, Gundam F-91 and Shark's Counter-Attack. It's like, I, yeah. I don't understand where people who say that, uh, you know, uh, Seabook is a... Uh, is a cardboard cat out. I don't know where they where they're coming from. Cause I mean, yes, they like uh, y you didn't really get much time with him, but at the same time, it, what he does, he, it really like uh, does define him as a character, and you can kind of see it. You know, he's uh, like, he tries to uh, protect. Uh, Sicily in a broken down yeah. gun tank R44 even take even taking a shot lancer to the machine and getting a nasty hit piece of yeah. shrapnel in, in the leg uh, for his efforts so uh, it, there's a lot of the like I know Heather talks about it a lot and I, I believe it bears repeating that yes there are moments in uh, a lot of these Gundam series which are which are very minor, but do do somewhat you know snowball into stuff. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's a weird take. Uh, I haven't watched it in a while, but I never saw Seabook as this kind of one-dimensional character. He, he did his role for what he needed to do. I feel. Um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, but but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What do you? What do you? Do people really think Seabook's kind of this one-dimensional character? I don't get too many takes, honestly. I've heard I some people uh, talk like, about you know, this one. I don't hear too many people talking about it, <laughs> unfortunately. Because most people don't watch F91. <laughs> yeah, that's, I guess that's it, right? I guess... I, I guess, guess we got the fun. fourth uh, most skipped <laughs> series, yeah. yeah. All right, we solved it. That's... All right. Well, well Then again, <laughs> you know... Uh, <laughs> He has the thing with uh, things like uh, Sentinel, cross Crossbone, and a lot of others. Like, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I keep getting reminded of uh, that uh, uh, one. Uh, I guess sort of the meme, where it's like, "Who wants this and that?" And uh, you know, all hands raise up, and you know, in the second, uh, I guess, frame of it, uh, mm -hmm. the guy asks, "Who wants to actually do it?" and uh, all hands are down. Like, who wants, uh, who wants some more Gundam Sentinel and uh, Gundam Crossbow? And you know, everyone's excited. Everyone's, uh, everyone's like, yes, yes, give us more Crossbow, and then they don't read it, <laughs> which is a big bummer. Which uh, yeah. you know, I guess that's uh, that's where uh, all of the coverage of uh, of Gundam stuff that's confined to manga. It, it really helps some of the people who uh, who kind of sleep on stuff. Like uh, for one, I've uh, noticed uh, like one guy cover the entirety of Gaia Gear and uh, is currently oh. making his way through uh, Sentinel. I think his name was Gaia Gaius or something like that. That's interesting. I have to look him up. He, uh, I'd say he, he he still struggles with a bit of like the old audio mixing thing, but. Uh, like his uh, his way of present and presenting is really good. Nice. All right. Yeah, I'm glad there's more people out there doing like later UC stuff. There needs to be more of that, and it's gonna be a while till I get to there. So <laughs> yeah, like I really need to get around to uh, doing part three of uh, the you know, the whole Crossbone Gundam saga because I uh yeah. I did uh, cover like. You know, part one and part two of the original uh, 1990s run. I'm I'm not sure whether you've seen it. It's uh, mm, which one? Oh no no no! I haven't I haven't watched it. Like, uh, not Should to boast, or it's uh, you know, <laughs> at uh, at the risk of uh, boasting, it is pretty good. <laughs> you should check it out. <laughs> All right, I'll check it out. I'm putting it on the playlist. But yeah. And probably, you know, possibly when I uh, finish uh, either this one, or the, the Skullheart one, or the Steel 7 one, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna uh, do a bit of a uh, meme video uh, where I, uh, I guess, recreate the, uh, the, the Linkara bit with 
The history of Power Rangers has no set schedule. Let me say this once again. History of Voltage Avengers has no set schedule. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just for shits and giggles. Yeah. Okay. I dig it. Uh, I like for... it. I need to tell myself uh, when I eventually edit this uh, <laughs> that, you know, to add some uh, pictures to, uh, to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to it. To in case you haven't noticed, I've been more than a little busy the last few months. This meant getting back in the Kia, having to completely refill my gas tank, having to go to another gas station because my debit card didn't work. Because that thing is hilarious. Yeah. And it has been parodied so many times. Oh, yeah. That's... I like your, your couch gag. You did the Simpsons couch gag? Oh, yeah. I did. Yeah, that's a good one. I dig that one. I do a lot of um, the smaller videos, so to speak, uh, and uh, nowadays I don't do them as frequently because I try to, you know, I try to do more scripted stuff. But you know, when uh, I guess in recent weeks I've uh, I've been kind of, you know, going back and forth on whether, you know, whether to be more frequent with the short uh, shorts, whether or not, and I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I've uh, come to a conclusion with that you know when uh, when I eventually run into a period where I have uh, a lot more work to do where I can't really you know tend to scripts and such that right. I think I think that might uh, allow me to kind of justify to myself that uh, yeah I should just throw the I guess the roster overview of as the Gundam Gashapon Wars or something like that. It's something that right. doesn't uh, take much effort, but you know, still counts as content nonetheless. Works. Yeah. Because I really, I don't know. I, I guess I'm a, a tad self-conscious when it comes to like half-assing stuff. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's hard. Sometimes it, it you. But then it comes to, uh, that's one thing I hate about that is, like, the perfectionism kind of stops you from working sometimes. Oh, yeah. And so then you gotta get over that, and it's, like, this balance between the two. Oh, yeah, balance. Balance is good. Good old balance. And I just finished my can of beer. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so. Oh, it's too early for me to do that, unfortunately. I gotta wait another... Eight hours or so. Oh, yeah. Like this. Uh, <laughs> this is the sort without, like, without much alcohol content, but it makes you, it makes you fat if you drink a lot of it, nonetheless. So, I'm, uh, <laughs> I guess this, uh, this was my treat in like uh, no, a whole lot of months. Just... Like, I. Uh, <laughs> this is the thing with like, kind of the treat foods. Like, um, uh, for me that's. Sometimes donuts. I, mm -hmm. I like donuts because, like, they're you know when you bite into them, they they basically doesn't like completely disintegrate. <laughs> it's almost yeah. like eating marshmallows, but it's it's like a marshmallow cake. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, I love uh, that. Yeah, but obviously I don't can't really like unless I wish to be Homer Simpson, I would not. <laughs> I wouldn't be caught dead <laughs> engorging on them. I, I just oh, have yeah. one, you know, every once in a while. Yeah, they're dangerous. They could, they could stack up. Oh yeah, <laughs> pun fully intended. Yes, pun intended. <laughs> but yeah, I suppose we're we're like getting, uh, I guess, closer to an impasse of just running out of notes, running out of topics. So this, this is yeah. now the food podcast. We're talking uh, about food. Oh yeah. Food Okay. <laughs> I better stop myself, otherwise I'm gonna gush about uh, you know canned pineapple chunks for <laughs> for like 40 minutes. Wouldn't want that. But yeah, I'll. Uh, yeah, I suppose I'll. Uh, we'll we'll try to you know. I guess inch our way closer to closing thoughts. So, uh, no, any closing uh, closing thoughts on your part? Um, don't make my mistake and uh, watch everything in uh, watch everything in, in uh, release order, not in linear order. That is my words of wisdom. 
but I will impart onto you. It is a better <laughs> way of watching things. And uh, go watch more late UC stuff. Go give that some love. It needs love right now. It's not getting enough attention. The one year war, the sleeves, all that has enough attention. We 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 know enough about Laplace's box. We know we know. Yeah, we know stand, we stand up for the victory. Stand up to yeah. the, to the victory. Let's, the victory. let's get out there. Let's go into the hundreds, man. Let's get triple digits up in this. Come on. Um, but yeah, go give some late UC some love. And I'm I'm saying that as. To motivate myself as well, because I need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, you know, that's some words of wisdom. I yeah, I must absolutely. say. But regardless, I <laughs> uh, uh, thank you very much for uh, yeah. for joining me on this occasion, and yeah, I suppose no we're gonna get close to calling it. So, regardless, right. do you have an outro of your own, or uh, do the honors? Just follow me on the go go watch some simply new type videos. Uh, follow us at Free Speech Geek. Uh, there's talk about X Men and more Gundam <laughs> stuff. But, but yeah, that's about it. Yeah. So, uh, Shirtlight and Kyle signing out. Catch you later. <laughs>